Hey everyone, welcome back to The Ready State. Today we are visiting an oldie and a goodie. In fact, it was the Mobility Project's first ever video, which is called the 10-Minute Squat Test. Now, hang in there for a second, because I know you've done this once or twice with us. When we originally put this out, we did it because what we were beginning to establish, or at least plant our flag in the, in the sand around saying, this is what everyone should be able to do. How do we reclaim native positioning? What is, what is it a human being should be able to do? Well, it turns out we should be able to sit on the ground and move on the ground and even take a poop on the ground, right? And it turns out that squatting all the way down was an excellent way to accumulate positional time under tension without any other rigmarole. You didn't need a band, you didn't need a barbell, you didn't need a squat. You didn't, you didn't, need, any, didn't need a squat rack, you didn't need any other equipment. You could just start to spend time at end range, which is the first order of business around restoring position or developing capacity in position. So when we get to the bottom of a lot of issues with people and we're helping them work through muscle skeletal compensation, et cetera, et cetera, one of the first questions we ask is, well, how much time are you spending in this position you're trying to chase? And suddenly, you can see why so many masters are into brachiating or hanging or 10 minutes in the squat test or at least exposure. If you, you, know, if you follow gymnasts, they are always on their hands. And the idea here is, hey, we can noodle on these positions and shapes over time simply by exposing ourselves to those positions. So when we started this thing, man, iPhone didn't have a video camera. And the first thing that we said was, Let's see if we can get 10 minutes in this bottom position. Now, for a lot of us, that was the first time anyone had really asked us to spend time in this end range position, end range shape, right? And what we found is, man, my back started to ache, my shins were burning, and that was because that was an expensive position and, and really should be a cost-free position to hang out in, but we were working hard to achieve this end range position. Now, I appreciate it. We all have different capacities of the hip, but, comma, the special sauce here is that the only difference is your pelvis may be reversing earlier than someone else, right? But you should still be able to squat all the way to the ground with your heels on the ground. So there's something that is now kind of germane to this conversation around the 10 minute squat test, which is suddenly we're seeing a really big disruption between environment and organism. So the things that used to keep us a little bit intact as human beings, we would get up out of the bed, we'd walk and drive to school, we'd go to work, we'd go up and down stairs. We had a little bit more movement. Maybe we were going to classes and suddenly we find ourselves with a lot less movement, sort of enriched environment opportunities. I think that's a nice way of saying, man, we sit on the couch, we go to Zoom, we do a little workout. And so one of the things we're trying to do again is restore what some of our native abilities and positions are, which is a shorthand for, man, let's get into this bottom position. So now, key here is don't obsess about what my feet are doing. I've got a nice arch, my ankles in the middle of my feet, I can move my stance super wide, I can go super narrow, it doesn't matter, I wanna have movement choices. We don't believe that there's a single squat position for you, why? Because you may have to hold the weight here, you may have to hold the weight here, you may have to hold the weight here, you might have to straddle something. We wanna give you movement choices given your native physiology. So not only are we spending time at end range of the ankle, and the knee is in a flexed, very stable position, and the hip is flexed to end range, but guess what's happened with my back? Notice that I've got this gorgeous, relaxed curve in the back. In order to have a normal lumbar spine, a healthy lumbar spine, we've got to expose it to flexion and extension. So one of the sneaky ways and sneaky things we did over a decade ago was start to program in this loss of of lumbar curve, and it's not a loss because at this bottom point I should be able to relax. And one of the things that gets lost in this greater language about human capacity and physiology is this idea that how did the body used to take care of itself? Over two and a half million years of evolution, how did we evolve in order to maintain function, maintain position, maintain shape? What was it about the environment that allowed us to maintain our native ranges of motion and capacities so that we could run, fight, flee, play, do all the things we need to do as humans? Well, it turns out we used to sit on the ground a lot more. So one of the ways that we can begin to tune the body is by spending some time in these ground positions. Well, it turns out we know, that the research is very strong, that your ability to get up and down off the ground without using your hands is an excellent predictor of your mortality and morbidity. Well, guess what? One of the ways that work on that is 
by spending time in this end range squat. Because you can see that all I've done is cross my legs and made it even easier for me to potentially expose my hips to these end ranges. But when we're in this bottom end range position of the squat, what we're telling our brains are, these are positions and shapes that we value. Being able to long sit, being able to side sit, being able to 90-90 is all a part of a movement language that has been particularly lost as modern human beings, but also easy to start to restore. So one of the first things you can do and appreciate that you're a system of systems is that we want you to start to develop a language of squatting with your feet straighter. And we talk about a lot on this channel about why we want a foot, a straighter foot. Allows us to generate more force, gives us more movement options, allows us to create higher function of stability through the pelvis and the femur, right? These are all important things. Squatting like this is totally fine, but it's not taking full advantage of your native abilities. Now, when I'm in this position or spend time supported in this position, one of the things that happens, and I can hold on to the wall, still doing my 10-minute squat test. Hold on to something here, still doing my 10-minute squat test. Hold the plate out, still 10-minute squat test. And the idea here is that when I begin to tell my brain this is the linkage that creates a more stable hip, then I at least begin to untangle the complexity of all the compensation. And as we're trying to solve low back discomfort, low back pain, musculoskeletal low back issues in America and in the world, worldwide, what we know is that the WHO is reporting that low back pain, low back dysfunction, low back disability is the number one cause of disability on the planet right now. And one of the things we want to appreciate is that your femurs, your legs, are attached to your pelvis, which is strangely attached to your low back. So there always seems to be lots of conversations about what the heck is going on with backs in America and very little conversation about what's going on with hips in America. And in this situation, an easy analogy is the tail is wagging the dog for most of us, right? The tail and the, the back is the dog. It is not core strength. It is not core bracing. That is, man, we have beat those things to a pulp. But what we haven't done is said, hey, what is it a spine should be able to do? Well, it turns out a spine should easily be able to manage enough flexion that I can sit in this bottom position. Now, if you already have a herniated disc and you're flexion intolerant, you may need to do something that looks like this. Now, notice I've taken all the load out of my spine. My feet are still straight and I'm on my toes. Rock solid bomber position, right? Maybe I need to lift and squat with some, with some heels on. But in the bottom line here is, as we begin to untangle this mess between environment and organism, human being and how we're currently living, let's appreciate that some of the conditions in which we originally evolved have changed, which is, thank goodness, I love penicillin and toothpaste. I think those things are great. But I need to be asking myself, what is it that makes me a human being and allows me to maintain my native function for all 100 years of my lifespan? Having normal function baseline ranges of motion of the ankles, knees, and hips means that I at least can tap into the native capacities of the human being. An easy thing to do, I don't mean, ultimately I would love it if you could, someone could hand you something heavy in this bottom position, you could stand up. Oh, that's Olympic lifting, right? But not all of us have a hip that would allow for rock solid positioning in the bottom position. But all of us have hips that allow us to squat at least all the way down. Or, have hips that allow us to squat up against the wall while we're taking cigarette breaks on our Zoom, right? So the idea here again is what is it a human being should be able to do? Why aren't we do capable of doing that? Well, let's give ourselves a minute, appreciate that the environment isn't really conducive to keeping the human being intact and whole. One of the ways to do this, work on spending more time in the bottom position. Is there magic about 10 minutes? Maybe, but maybe for you it's nine minutes. Maybe for her it's 12 minutes. The idea is, what am I supposed to do as a human? Am I doing it yes or no? We're there with sleep. We're there with hydration. We're starting to get there with nutrition. We know we at least have to eat, right? We've got to feel loved and we've got to feel safe. We've got to feel like we have purpose and belong in a tribe. Well, it turns out movement is also a vital sign. It's also a foundation of human experience. So instead of arguing about what kind of hard style exercise you like to do, Forget that, be agnostic about the way you train and more sort of uh, 
adherent to the positions that are required. And at very least, start to expose yourself to some of these shapes and positions. Spending time comfortably on the ground is how we would eat dinner in Thailand, how we would build a campfire, how you even type a poo in the woods. You got this, start building towards that 10 minutes, start to see the magic and capacity of your body. You got this.